Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my NHL 20 franchise mode here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. In the previous episode, we headed into an early off season after a miserable regular season, but the draft almost made up for a missed season a missed opportunity at a stanley cup gone by the wayside we're two years into this franchise mode entering year number three this episode but i think missing the playoffs and having having an opportunity to move up and pick a 60 goal scorer in the ncaa in tristan o'reilly might be a blessing in disguise but obviously we left we left off this the last episode talking about free agency and the decisions that we have to make. Now I've spent I spent a few days thinking of my upcoming lineups. Now there's a bunch of contracts coming up next year and I'm just going to start off by just showing the th there's so many contracts. There isn't even a proper word to say Johnny Goudreau does not currently want a contract extension. He'll probably ask for something like $8 million. I'm sure by the time we can offer him... I mean, we can offer him a contract now, but he doesn't want to talk. I don't blame him. He's definitely a big piece of this core, but... That would hurt us losing him. Brock Besser. You know, Brock Besser, absolute beauty. Got him from Vancouver for Elias Lindholm and, and a bunch, a bunch of assets, but... Coming off of the down year in Vancouver, they got the third overall pick. Brock Besser's looking for some new... Uh, a new fire here in Cal... A fire? Get it? Calgary? Flames? Oh, I'm such a genius. What is he? What would he want right now? One year, I'm not willing to give him one year. I'd, I'd rather give him the full eight, but 13? I'll, I'll wait until partway through next season. Matthew Kachuk... I mean, two years, would he want an $8 million con or eight year contract? I want to look up, lock up my big guys, but he's, honestly, Tristan O'Reilly's going to be good enough for the top six within a year and a half, which makes Johnny Goudreau, Matthew Kachuk, and Taylor Hall expendable. And you might be saying, expendable? How is that possible? Tristan O'Reilly's going to be great. I know that already. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sign any of them just yet. Colton Paranko does have to be signed as well. I'd love to give him an extension. Four years at 5.2. Okay, I want to make sure we match that contract up with other contracts. I, I want to start doing that. So Colton Paranko. What? So I'm bad at counting. So what? 20, 25. That what? One. Two, three, three year, three year contract. I'm pretty sure that's right. Three year contract. I, I'd rather match it up with Noah Hannafin. Three year contract at five point. Yeah, that's a phenomenal contract for Colton Paranko that we who we just got from St. Louis brings him up till thir 31, 32 years of age. I mean, he's in his prime. We're probably going to be successfully making the postseason every year at that point or we should start doing be doing that this season but 4.543 seasons ah uh, yes that's a phenomenal contract for him and i think everybody else right now I mean, was there anybody else left on the expiring well we have to talk about valimaki and sam bennett Okay, so at the end of last episode, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to give them their contracts right away because I'm not sure what's going to be out there in free agency. Good news, we retain their rights. First, I'm going to give Valimaki a contract. You know, our, t our top four D-men are looking great. Noah Hannafin, Colton Parenko, TJ Brody, Valimaki. That top four would look really solid, and if I'm not willing to give him a six-year contract just yet. I think if we give him a two-year contract, brings him, uh, well, a four-year contract, he'd still be a restricted free agent. Two years, uh, we could also match that up with Colton Paranko's contract and Noah Hannafin's. Three-year contract, I'd be more happy with that, and then we know what kind of defenseman 
he's what he what he is at that point. He's to be 25, 26 years of age, done developing. What will he be? I'd be willing to pay him that sort of money then. But for right now, uh, 4.2 times 0.85. If we can get him at this kind of number, because in what world are you going to pay a 22-year-old defenseman $5 million for one actual season in the NHL? But I'll give him, I'll give him 3.7 for three years. It's an easy contract to give. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this now. J.D. McNeil, who has been very present on my channel as of late, creating both the Google Docs or the spreadsheets for both franchise modes at the same time, and he's an absolute G. Much love for you. I can't believe somebody would actually do that for me. You have been very opinionated in the best way possible. You are spitting facts. Sam Bennett is apparently... Well, he... I'm not sure he's going to be the best second-line center for us this season. I don't think he's going to grow. I think, obviously, year one, he had a phenomenal year on the second line. We were winning. He was really good. But he came into this year at an 83 overall, and it just hurt him. Minus 16, 35 points, which isn't bad, but he, nobody was good. And he's dropped. What kind of money would he be asking for right now? $2.1 million for one year. That doesn't hurt us in any which way. I'm okay with giving him a contract like that, especially getting him under, onto a roster. He can play third line minutes. Maybe we get him on that second line, depending... Depends if he grows at all, right? I'm not sure if he's going to jump back up to that original 83 overall. But uh, 1.9 for one year can't hurt us in the slightest. Now... Let's head into the free agency class real quick, okay? Let's head in here real quick. Now, J.D. McNeil coming back in, or uh, again, you had another great opinion about the goaltender that I was originally going to go after. Where is he? Let's find him somewhere. The medium franchise, Sir Rorkin, who actually, the day that I'm recording this, was just signed by the New York Islanders to his to a deal. So congratulations to Rorkin on the money, which I will never make in my lifetime. I the plan is the plan originally was to sign him, for sure. But I've kind of been steered away from that 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 idea. You know, we have Dustin Wolf, we have a David Riddich. I think we're very good. We're very good at drafting goaltenders in franchise modes, especially this year. Other years, terrible. But this year specifically, I'm very good at drafting goaltenders in the draft, or even if we need to pick one up. The difference between 82 overall goaltender and an 88 isn't that much in simulation. So I'm going to roll with the original plan. Dustin Wolf is the guy going forward, he's going to be our guy. Obviously. Oh, like a Thatcher Demko would be sick, right? But I think I'm going to stick with David Riddich for the year. I don't think he was necessarily the problem last year. I really don't believe that. I think it was just a mess all around for everybody. It was just a crappy year, and sometimes you just gotta roll over and die. <laughs> Some years are just like that. So we're not going to sign him. Our goaltenders are fine. We'll have in the NHL. Dustin Wolf is set to be our backup. I'm hoping he has some off-season growth. But now that you mention that, he might not be ready for the NHL. So maybe there's a cheaper goaltender out here that we can just we can just keep for one year. And I think it's James Reimer, Optimus Rhyme. Yeah, we're going to sign him to that. Oh, we'll give him two year. I'll give him a one year, a whopping, what, like a $2 million deal for one. We have $20 million to work with. That's fine. $2 million for one year for James, the real deal. Or, no, that's I'm thinking of James Neal. James, I can't think of a nickname. Optimus Rhyme. Optimus Rhymer. Works for me. 
$2 million for one year. If Dustin Wolf isn't ready, so be it. But I want to make sure we can get a solid goaltender just in case. He can even keep him in the AHL just in case there's any injuries. And first, let me check if there's any potential prospects here. And it doesn't look like there's anything crazy. No, I'm not sure Sam Bennett's going to be our guy. I'm not sure if he's going to be our guy. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to go out and get a Dougie Hamilton. I think he doesn't want to be in Calgary, especially some of the things I've heard. IRL, he didn't like it here in Calgary. I don't blame him. He's there in Carolina now. Now he's in free agency. Let him go wherever his heart desires, but it won't be here in Calgary because our defensive core is looking phenomenal. I have no problem. Brent Gallagher would be nice, but our top six is set. Johnny Goudreau, Sean Monaghan, Brock Besser. Second line, Taylor Hall, Centerman, and and Kachuk. The Centerman. Difficult question, because I'm not sure Sam Bennett's going to be our guy. And going into this year, I want to be successful. I want this team to be good. Of course I want this team to be good. Who's the, who, who? Who is the guy? I think it's... I know a lot of you guys have said, Oh, don't go after center. Sam Bennett might be the guy. Sam Bennett might not be ready. And then we'll have to trade assets for something that we could have gotten free here in free agency. Hence the free agency. Duh. I like Gary Mayhew. Jerry Mayhew. Gary Mayhew. What, Gerald. Whatever. Two-way forward, he simulates pretty well. Over 120 points, or 100, 130 points in the last two seasons. Damn good player. Andreas Anthonisiu. How has he played in Edmonton? Not the greatest of hockeys. Uh, not, not the greatest of hockeys, oh my lord. And... Honestly, on the second line, you could 100% use... A two-way forward between a Taylor Hall and a Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk was god-awful last year. And Mayhew can uh, put up some goals, if need be. He's He's got a five-star shooting category. We could even switch him to a sniper. But he does want the four years, which I'm not willing to give up. Anthony C. wants three. Let, let's go to centerman. Let's... Well, I did have another idea. There is a centerman out on the uh, on the block, which we could bring over for one season, that I talked about last episode. Any of these centermen want a one-year contract? I know you might be saying, well, one-year contract, what does it have to do with anything? Next year is going to be a pain. And, you know, I don't like changing the years wanted on these free agents, depending on their, their level of talent, especially Taylor Hall. I didn't mess with that. I think I'm going to go after a guy. I think just to be certain, to make a run at a Stanley Cup, we're going to go make a trade with a team in our division. And that is the San Jose Sharks. They're a hopeful team. They're getting old. They're not looking the greatest anymore. you got a Logan Couture, a, a Vlasic, and a Vander Kane on the block, and Brent Burns. They're not getting any better. But there is an aging Joe Thornton on the block. 3.9 for one season, which works out perfectly. We give him a chance at a Stanley Cup. Obviously, we need to fix up our cap. But I'm willing to give them something, right? I mean, I'm looking at my prospects down here. Would anybody work? I mean, I'm not totally s sold on Sam Bennett being our second line center next year. I just don't think he'll be good enough. I think we can get him to play third line time for sure. What is he? He's a he's a lefty. We can get him somewhere around there. He might even he might even fill in for Dylan Dubé. But what would a San Jose want? Looks like they want some prospects. I'm willing to give them. This is actually quite hard. Do you want a goaltender? <laughs> you, want, you want a goalie? No, I can't give you a goalie. I mean, we do... I mean, it is... 
Joe Thornton. Do we give them a Roman, who's 21, two-way forward at 71 overall? I'm not sure how much this guy's going to grow. I've never seen him grow in franchise mode before. He's 21. Let's say he'll be 22 next year. Highest he grows next year, 75. Then he's 22 next year, barely gets to an 80. And by then, a Kondratev is going to be our guy. I think the best option right now is getting the Joe Thornton. And that won't even be enough trade value to get it done. Let's see if it does it. Trade rejected. I really want this Joe Thornton. This Joe Thornton kid. Would you like a, a draft pick? Uh, we've given up a lot. But to win, I'm willing to give you a little, little, little bit more. So Roman and a third for Joe Thornton. Roman's going to be a solid NHL kid one day. But for right now, I plan on winning. Giving us our best opportunity to win, Joe Thornton. Welcome to Calgary. Welcome back north of the border, you good old Canadian kid. He's Canadian, right? Joe Thornton's Canadian. Yeah. Very, very weird. Welcome to Calgary. But I think right now we are just going to simulate a few days and see... Uh, Dylan Fagoof! A uh, Dylan Fagoof? Dion! Dion Fagoof. I'm not trading him. How dare you. Ah. Uh, nah. I can wait on that. I don't need to make any trades this very second. I did sign a bunch of scouts. Bunch of... Bunch of scouts. That does remind me. I have to go get a coach. Or revamp our coaching system. That That is the plan. Before any of them get signed. There was one... Actually, no. There's a bunch of guys that I'm currently looking at. Okay, because our head coach during the season just didn't work he, he was what a c a c coach for the, the head coach just does not work and uh the plan is to completely revamp our our our, our staff so i'm going to fire our nhl head coach we are going to fire our assistant coach uh or how are you do you are you good teaching I'm going to fire you as well. I'm going to fire all of you. That means I'm going to keep this Barkowski guy just for a hot second because I am looking at a generalist head coach. And you might be wondering, oh, and you said you wanted to go for more of a forward path. But it seems that this Cameron Eichel looks to be the best fit. Now, I know it says roll four lines, but a balanced coach. Our defense year one was her best asset. Year two, it was one of our greatest weaknesses. But looking at this, it gives Sean Monaghan plenty of sh scheme fit. Johnny Goudreau, Taylor Hall, it looks like it, it works for a lot of our guys. I think Eichel's the guy to go for. And you, you look at a Kovacs, you look... Oh, maybe, like... Uh, I, I don't like how... I like, I like, I shouldn't have to explain myself. Cameron Eichel, I like a lot more than everybody else. It seems like he's the right guy to go with right now. Which means we're going to give him a crap ton of money. I know it says we only have $3.5 million with remaining budget. And uh, here's something fun for you. Budget doesn't matter in the off season when it comes to coaches and scouts and all of that if the owner mode is off ta-da the more you know so Cameron Eichel we're just going to pull some money out of our pockets give it to you I want you to be our head coach the head coach of the Calgary Flames I want to get us back to the Stanley Cup Finals and eventually a Stanley Cup Stanley Cup number two in our franchise now I think uh, six million dollars should be good i know i wish there was an easier way for this ea please please going forward just help help us out here you got this gilroy a generalist looks like he's pretty solid for everybody so i guess we'll give him a contract he wants to be our i'd rather give him our assistant assistant works that means we'll have to give him a little bit of a raise now ea here's another little bit of a little bit of a critique you know every coach 
looks exactly the same. Or as in, like, I had Jamison Wellwood, my head coach for the majority of my last franchise mode, and I found a coach that looks exactly like him in year one. It's like they didn't even put time into creating custom faces, but ah, ah, it's whatever EA. It's, you know, you know, each and every year I buy this game, and each and every single year I'm like, well, what did you expect, Owen? Okay, NHL. NHL goalie coach Drew Hunt, welcome to the squad. You better be the you better be the man. That's all I'm saying. And obviously, let's get uh, an AHL coach. I know this is the boring stuff, but uh, too bad, so sad. We'll get a we'll get a generalist. Works for me. Oh, guess we're gonna have to give you a little bit of a pay raise, Craig. Craig, that's a weird name, don't you think? Not a weird name. No offense, any Craigs out there. But like Craig. Craig. I don't know why. That just weirds me. I don't know why. What else do we... Wow, we need a bunch. We. Why did I... Why do I have so many... So many... Oh, because I fire them all. Right. This is entertainment, ladies and gents. Entertainment at its finest. Okay, Cabriolet. And an assistant... Co oh my god, Owen! What you doing? Is there any other... Wow. Okay, I guess I'll just get a... Associate coach that will give you assistant time. Is associate coach better than assistant coach? Like, who has the bigger say? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know how that works. I should know how it works, but I don't. So, too bad. So, we're hoping Cameron Eichel is the big guy. Everybody else, I really could care less. Just make, just make it easier for me. But, uh, let's go ahead, simulate... A few days, see if we get these guys under contract. Cameron Eichel is the new head coach of the Calgary Flames. Dwight Gilroy, welcome to the squad. Drew Hunt, our NHL goalie coach. Caberlet will decline the contract. Well, it's cool. You don't like Stockton? <laughs> Wait, did we? Ah, whatever. Sam Bennett has signed that deal. Okay. Yusuf Valimaki. You have not come to the table with enough cash to make me consider signing with your team when you decide to offer a different amount of years. That Oh, shut up, Valimaki. James, James Reimer. Rhyme time, baby. Welcome to Calgary. Uh, Yusuf, you are not... You are not in the driver's seat right now. I am the man. And you don't get to mess with me. Don't tick me off. You're going to take a three-year deal, but I will give you 4.5 for those three years. You're going to take it, and you're going to like it, because you're not you're not a you're not in the right to negotiate. You have barely any NHL experience. Call Paul Mary, McQuaid to Carolina and New Jersey gets <laughs> Ryan Suzuki and a first. Uh, Kyle Palmieri's a really solid NHL guy. Probably New Jersey's best consistent player right now in New Jersey. But they get Ryan Suzuki to first. Uh, phenomenal trade from New Jersey. Craig Miller signed the contract right there. Dope. Colton Perenko has signed that extension. Colton, thank you so much. The sign and trade wasn't just a rental. Dion Phaneuf staying in Calgary. I don't care. I don't care. Yusuf Valimaki, it's time for you to make that. It's time for you to sign, bud. It's time for you to sign. Yusuf Valimaki has signed the deal. Cool. Dion Phaneuf to Toronto. Hold on, I'll actually. How's how good is how good is Hull? How are you? What are you like a seventy? Why would I do that? Whose man's would like? Yeah, it's a great. Tell me, in what world? Would the AI think this is a good trade? You got Hull in a 7th. Okay, 74 overall defenseman in 7th. What, what would we be giving up? Two fourths and Dion Phaneufs, who, who is... He probably makes an NHL lineup in this game. Like, what? what? Excuse me, game? Seriously? Oh my god, you want X Games mode. Dion Funa for a fourth. No. No, see? See, that doesn't make any sense. This game doesn't make any sense. But I think 
I'm going to cut it at that. No, the episode is not over. We're going to get some simulation done this episode, but it's going to take some sweet time to get this lineup together. So give me a hot second. So after a whole bunch of tinkering, I believe I've gotten these lineups to look the best I possibly could right now. So let's jump into the 2021-2022 Calgary Flames lineup. Now, there might be a few weird decisions you might see, especially one of the bigger talking points from earlier this episode, Sam Bennett. Former fourth overall pick, he peaked in year number one of this franchise mode, and you could put him there, you could, you could move him all over the lineup, but I'm not risking the development of my other players specifically for him. And if him being on the fourth line means that that third line with Tristan O'Reilly is that much better, I'm willing to take that shot. Nicola, uh, Nicholas Baptiste is a solid prospect. He's a solid, solid kid for us now. Where, where, when did we even get him? Did we get him via trade or did we, we just had him in Stockton? Did we, si we must have signed him in free agency. Must have. But you know what, let's start at the top here. Now we do have a plus three on the top line. Johnny Hockey, Sean Monahan, and Brock the Beast Besser. Sean Monahan, I did change him to a playmaker. He was originally a two-way forward. I think that won't change much. His two-way ability is still there. I think the seasons that he's just had will now be amplified because he is now officially a playmaker. He's going to be passing that puck like a wizard to Johnny Hockey, to Besser, two guys that can score, and he can score as well. This top line is going to have to do some work this season. But I believe in them. That plus three is important. The second line, Joe freaking Thornton, 42 years of age, his, la his potential last run at a Stanley Cup. I mean, he did shave his beard IRL, but I believe... In this game, he will never, ever shave it until he wins a Stanley Cup, so it could be a while. Last year for San Jose, 74-point season. I think that's the only reason he's still playing is because of morale and how well he has played. 85 overall, or years of age, either one, either or, with Taylor Hall and Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk really needs it. It is a contract year for a lot of guys on these roster. I mean, what? Uh... Four of the t uh, four of our, five of our top six players need contracts at the end of the year. Joe Thornton will probably let go, right? Matthew Kachuk is just one of those guys that need a great season. Last year absolutely sucked. A minus 29. He's not been the best player for us. He's been kind of mediocre. First year wasn't bad. 29 goal season, not bad, but he was not effective at all, ever. We need him to be that guy for us. A power forward, we need him to be that guy. We might end up changing him to a two-way forward. I'm not sure. But right now, that second line is... It's looking... Our top six is looking great. And this is one of the seasons that we just need to compete. We need to be good off the bat. We need to start gluing together. We need to start molding this team together. Because we have options at the end of the year... But I want this team to work going into the future. And the third line, Dylan Dubé, getting that spot on the third line, had a rough year last season, but he's up He's up on that third line. I, I hope he takes some strides, Nicholas Baptiste. And the one and only Tristan O'Reilly is going to take a top six spot next year. Whom will leave this squad? I'm... Actually, Taylor Hall isn't leaving at the end of the year. I forgot. Uh, so we just have Johnny Goudreau, Brock Besser, Kachuk, and Thornton potentially leaving. But O'Reilly wants to take a spot. He will 100% take a spot in the top six in the, in the next year and a half. At the end of the season, he'll be in one. He'll be in a top six spot. Who's the, who's the odd man out? Uh, one of these guys got to make it really, really hard for me not to move them. That's what I want to see. O'Reilly is getting a bunch of power play time. I hope he pulls it off. Now, the fourth line isn't too bad. You got Austin Sersnick, Jankowski, and Bennett. I would have put Mangia Payne in here, but they go down to a minus one. And I really don't want to 
I don't like seeing minuses on my squad, so I'll go with Sarsnik. Or Chersnik. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I will never ever know. But this is the best I could get a forward core. It doesn't look too shabby. Defensively, beautiful. I'm glad our changing of coaches has not hurt us that much. Noah Hannafin and Colton Perenko are a plus three. Gorgeous. Colton Perenko signed to a new, newly minted three-year extension after this year. Phenomenal. Yuso Valamaki, giving him that chance. And a three-year contract as well. So these are top guys... Are all make are all three years and they're going to get paid at the end of those three years, so it's gonna be fun. Now, Jacob McKinnis. We drafted him in year number one, the second round, alongside Bickle, who we did end up trading, if I'm not mistaken. Now, this is something that I might have glossed over earlier. But if you don't recall, the Calgary Flames had a McKinnis before. The one, the only, one of the hardest slap shots of all time, Al McKinnis, a former Calgary Flame, former St. Louis Blue. Blue? It's blues. Whatever. Part of me wants to believe, in my head canon, that Jacob McKinnis is somehow related to Al. And apparently, Calgary has not retired Al's number, so I gave him his number number two representing family i know jacob mckinnis is american and al is actually canadian but it happens all the time where they got dual citizenship and they just choose oh i'll, I'll be re represented by uh, america whatever he's the offspring of a legend third pairing tj brody it's not going to hurt him too much he's playing plenty of special team time and dion fogoof former calder winner absolute beauty NHL cover athlete. Why wouldn't you want him? Now let's head into our special teams. Plus three and a plus one. This team needs to. This team needs to win. Win games. We need to compete for a President's Trophy. This this team has it all. We can compete. One hundred and fifty percent. This team is one hundred percent capable. One hundred and fifty percent capable, especially with a plus five top pairing defensive, or. Top line penalty kill. F four man penalty kill. Dylan Dubé, Jankowski, McKinnis, and Hannafin. They have a plus five. I have no idea why, but I'm very happy with it. Oh, yeah. Three man penalty kill. Still looking. It's looking good. We're looking good. Uh, Tristan O'Reilly is on the point most of the time because he's got an absolute rocket. He's got a plus, he's got a five-star shooting category and a five-star puck skills category. He's going to hurt some teams in the very near future. Extra attacker, Sean Monaghan and Goudreau want to see how they do on a competitive team. And our goalies this year, David Riddich and James Reimer. Now, y you might be saying, well, you could... Put in Dustin Wolf. Dustin Wolf is not yet ready. He's a 78 overall, and he's still playing in the CHL as it is at his age. So one more year in some CHL competition will not hurt. At a 78, I think James Reimer is a bit better and can help our causes. So one more year without Dustin Wolf won't hurt us too much. Now the AHL, there's only a few. No, notable prospects, but our two Russians from the year one draft in the first round, Ivan Kasparaitis and Vacheslav Kondraitev, have made it to the AHL. K Kasparaitis was here last year, Kondraitev, this is his rookie season. We also have a Shannon Exelby, who we, who we drafted in year number one. So we got our year number one drafty line in the AHL, they're getting plenty a special team time. There's no other other notable prospects here. Oliver Shillington, who uh, trade asset, I guess. Too bad. And goaltending. You got Sparks and whomever. And scratch players. Not a big deal. And you might be wondering, who's the captain? Who is the captain in year number three? And we did just trade Mark Giordano to the Pittsburgh Penguins for the second overall pick. 
right now we are going to wait to see who the leader is. It might end up being... It might end up being the left winger in Tristan O'Reilly. But for right now, we're going to hold off. I think a very good contender is Sean Monaghan. Goudreau doesn't want a contract, so I don't even want to talk to him. Noah Hennepin. Very, de very definite possibility. But it's, it's kind of up for you guys to decide. So at the end of this year, I want to know who the captain is. But I think you guys are ready for a little bit of simulation. Year number three is underway. We did simulate... One game into the preseason, just so I could get some free agents down there to help us in the AHL. Let's sim to game number one of the third season. Uh, we will not be trading Joe Thornton, even for a first. No, Boston, no thank you. I should say something before we simulate. I did find something quite incredible. Now, obviously, the th year three draft is crazy in each franchise mode I've done. Matthew Savoie is the top guy and Shane Wright are the two top guys, but apparently the AI has created an absolute monster. You know, Shane Wright and Matthew Savoie are both franchise guys, so the top three are all franchise guys. This is the year you want to tank, and we're going to be good, but a Terrell Brown from the NLA is similar to Mario Lemieux. He's going to be like 84, 85 out of the draft. Sh yes. <laughs> this is the year all those teams want to tank. Oh. Uh, my God. This is the year. This is the draft to remember. I don't even... I have no idea who that kid is. The AI created him. You rarely see that, especially when you have... A franchise guy already in the draft. They rarely create a guy better than that. Phenomenal. He's going to be the eater of worlds. Joe Thornton. We will not be trading you, Joe. Jumbo Joe. We're not... Tr we're, we are here to win games. I believe in us this season. Last year, I thought we had it... I thought we had it together. We bought. We traded. We brought this team together. And it wasn't enough. But this year, we want more we want the playoffs we want to succeed and it starts with game number one against the edmonton oilers in the battle of alberta first period of play and edmonton is up three to nothing early ah david riddich are we gonna have to trade you this season <laughs> are seriously david really second period oh we get one back dion fugoof of course, a shorty. Are you kidding me? Oh, James Reimer. Oh, my God. What? It's been a bad game. Wow. This is how we're going to start off things. I, I had a little... Uh, I thought I had a little more... Oh, confidence in the squad going forward. But it's just one game. Usually, we don't simulate well in the first game. Get our kinks out of the system. And we get absolutely dominated by the Edmonton Oilers. In game number one, Dreisaitl absolutely kicking us while we're down. A 7-2 loss in game number one. David Riddich, you are on a short, short leash right now. So uh, let's, let's wipe that from our memory. Let's just get through the first month of play and see where we're at because I think we're capable of great things on this squad. First win of the season against the Montreal Canadiens. We head back to Alberta with a win. 2-1 victory. Jacob McInnes has been hurt with a mild concussion early into his career. That hurts. But we do have Derek Forbot, Forbert, Forbot, whatever. And uh, we have a few great defensemen as our scratch players who, uh, whom I forgot to show you. I'm sorry about that. Head coach plays his player for a few games. We beat Nashville and we beat Chicago. That's four straight wins. Derek Forbot has also been hurt. So I believe we will throw our other scratch defensemen in there. And that's why I held three of them. <laughs> and we beat Philly. That's five straight victories. San Jose. Oh, draft class. We lose to San Jose. Jacob McInnes is back. Welcome back to the squad. You better not be injury prone. I don't want to. I don't want you to get hurt. So Andrew Nielsen is our other, other scratch defenseman, which I'm happy I kept him up. Jacob McInnes, you don't swear to God, man. The the legend is in your blood, baby. You could go TJ Brody like that, 
but I want to spread out the wealth. I don't want that third pairing to be too bad, so I think splitting Dion and McKinnis up is, is for the best. Okay, Florida, we lose two straight there, five, two, and one. We rebound with a victory against the Dallas Stars. That's a biggie. Nashville, come on, let's beat them again. Yes, we do in the shootout. No, I don't want raffle. Why? Who? AI, please come up with an interesting trade once in a while. Taylor Hall wants to speak to me about ice time. Well, I'm going to try to persuade you because... Oh, and you're... Uh, I'm going to disagree. Sorry, you're getting plenty of time elsewhere. I don't care, Taylor. You had a terrible season last year. You were supposed to lead this team. What did you lead us to? Nothing. Joe Thornton, you are a second liner. You're playing special team time. Yes, Joe Thornton, you're a beast and you're happy. You're 42. What, what else would you have to be mad about? Literally. Retirement? That's it. And the Pittsburgh Penguins too. And no, McKinnis, for the love of God, man. Oh, this is going to stunt his growth. Forbot, welcome to the quad. Welcome to the squad. Pittsburgh, we end the month. A phenomenal stretch there. So we lose the first game of the season. Ouch. We win five straight. Lose one in OT. Lose one in regulation. Win, what is that? Five in a row. That was a great October. 10, 2, and 1. Our leading scorer is Jumbo Joe Thornton. We're three points up on first place in our division. We're on second place, I guess. Whatever. Joe Thornton. Jumbo Joe is leading this team in points, but let's see how everybody in general is doing. Joe Thornton, 14. Jumbo Joe, are you surprised? Sean Monahan after being transitioned to a playmaker. Point per game. Brock Besser, 12 points, 5 goals. Not too shabby. Matthew Kachuk, 11 points. Stepping it up. That's where it, he needs this most of all. At this crucial point in his career where he could either turn into a 92 or stay at an 85. He needs this kind of season. Taylor Hall, 10 points, 7 goals. Not too shabby. Johnny Goudreau. 9 points. He has not been Johnny Goudreau. He's getting that first line time. He's getting special team. He's getting all that. Really hasn't been the Johnny Goudreau you, you'd you you'd expect. Dylan Dubé with 7 points. Jankowski with 6. Sam Bennett with 3. Oh my god, what's going on? Tristan O'Reilly, man. What's going on? You're not a second liner, man. You're not a second liner yet. Ye that makes me sad. You should be doing better than that. Uh, okay. It was one month. It kind of scares me a little bit. I'm not... He has an 80 face-offs. Uh, are we going to transition him to the center position next year? Or this year? He has an 80 face-offs. As a winger, you rarely see that sort of thing. Especially as a sniper, I'd expect maybe power forward, two-way forward, but I think we're going to transition him to the center spot if he doesn't pick it up here. How about the defenseman? Noah Hannafin's been great. Stepping up as the leader on the defensive core, I appreciate that. Yusuf Valamaki is a minus player. He's putting up the points, though. Dion Fogouf, three points, plus seven. Beauty. TJ Brody, two points, plus five. Colton Parenko, two points. Plus minus is at a zero. Could be worse, though. Derek Forbot, one point in two games. And then McKinnis, nine games, zero points. Not been the best. Have I rushed him too early into the NHL? I'm not sure, but he's gotten hurt a bunch so far. Goaltending, David Riddich is 5 2 0, 898. But James. Rhyme time is 5 1 and 1 with a 944. Is James Rhymer my guy? <laughs> He's got an 80 poise. Yeah, but poise. David Riddich has an 88 poise, but like, James Rhymer. Maybe. He's that guy, but you know what? Since this episode has been so boring, let's go ahead and do one more month because one month is not, an, not enough to know where you're at. So let's go two months, see where the Calgary Flames are at going into December. First game of the month is against the New York Islanders. Matthew, what's the problem? You're playing 16 minutes a night as a second liner with special team time galore. You're fine. 
Okay, I'm gonna disagree with you. I don't care, Matthew Kachuk. I don't care who your father is. Shut up and play. You're, you've been great. 3 nothing. shutout loss. Vancouver. Jacob McInnes is back. <sighs> Please stop getting hurt. Please, for the love of God, stop getting hurt. Derek Forbot. McInnes. Uh, McInnes, you're going... You're gonna go there. You're gonna go on the third pairing, okay? Can you live with that for a little bit? We beat Vancouver. We lose to Vegas. Okay, under 500 in this month. For... God damn it, Jacob McInnes. What is with you, man? Oh my god. I'm sending him down to the AHL. He is not ready to be here. He is not ready to be in the NHL. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. I've never seen that. No, he's... NHL. I don't care. Cool? You're fine with that? That's what I thought. Jeez, dust, man. Are you kidding me? I've never seen that sort of thing. No, Jacob McInnes, you're going down to the AHL. There's, I'm not having somebody so unreliable. I know, too bad, so sad. But uh, you're not ready for the NHL. 100%. Have I hurt your... St I'm, you, it looked like you were ready. You had a great year last year in Stockton, so I'm sending you right back down. So we're going to pause the simulation. I'm making sure you get the time down there in the AHL. Three straight wins. Okay. 14-5-1. Sorry. Man, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you're not ready. You're not. So, too bad. So sad. You're going to have to go live in Stockton for a little bit longer. You should be ready next year, but for right now, you just don't have it. You just don't got it. What is you? What is your durability at, man? Or your endurance? Or your What's your durability at? Durability. At an 85! Ugh. Endurance? You shouldn't be getting injured as much as you are. You're just getting absolutely butchered out there, man. Oh my god, stop it. He's already dead. So maybe it was too much pressure on him. Being, being son of legendary hockey player. So McKinnis, you'll get first line time. Don't be upset, Fadoon. Oh my god, McInnes, you get second line time, so we can avoid that. Plenty of special team time, I'm not super worried about him, but uh, let's let's keep the simulation going. That was very unexpected this episode, I, d I didn't mean for that to happen, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. So let's head to the end of the month, keep the winning ways going. Maybe we'll be at 20 wins, maybe we'll be 500, I don't know. We beat Minnesota in the shootout. I'll take that. Arizona, 3-1 loss. Uh, Nelson, who are you? Who, how are you? From the St. Louis Blues. You are in 78 overall that I could literally pick up in free agency for free. Because it's free agency, dummies. Like, come on, AI. What? Oh, two straight losses. Don't like to see that. Don't like to see that. Winnipeg, that's a rebound win right there. Boston and Ottawa. Four bot for a third and a fourth. No, thank you, Nashville. We murder Boston and Ryan Reeves. Interesting trade. Ryan Reeves, I would love you on this lineup. But I could literally... I would literally just be picking you up for the memes. I'm sorry. You literally have 40, pe 40 penalty minutes through the season so far. Little Atlantic road trip. Uh, okay. Oh my, okay few injuries to shut the season so we win 8-3 lose 8-2 not fun not fun Columbus uh, we shut them out right there to end the month okay 18 9 and 1 we're we're in a playoff spot congratulations we're second and we're actually well we're tied for first Vegas has two games at hand on us playoffs okay Who's the worst team in the league right now? Oh my god, Flyers with 15 points, Canucks with 14. Oh my god, Canucks, we took Brock Messer from you and you've crapped the bed. Oh my. They'll probably lose out on the lottery this year as it is. So, let's see how see how we're performing so far. Sean Monahan with 32 points, he's stepping up. This is the year we needed him to step up and he is absolutely doing that. Brock Besser, 25 points, 11 goals. One of the best goal scorers on our team. Maybe a 30-goal campaign. I would love to see that. Joe, 
Thornton, 25 points. We've got a lot of 20-point scores on this squad. That's very good to see. Matthew Kachuk defensively, a uh, hundred times better than what he was last year. And he's putting up the points. Johnny Goudreau, I expect you to be over a point per game every season, and you have really disappointed me, especially going into the offseason this year. Maybe we trade you because we want Tristan. Oh, we want Tristan O'Reilly to be up there, okay? Well, and he can be transitioned to a center. So Taylor Hall, 20 points. 12 goals, though. He's leading in that category, so i got to give him some credit. Dylan Dubé, 13 points. Tristan O'Reilly is young. He is a minus three. I will take that into consideration. See, he is a third-line scoring forward. Okay, but I don't. I do really don't see a problem with that line. I think it's just because he's young, and that's how he's going to simulate. Six goals, maybe a 20-goal campaign this year, especially if he heats it up. I, th I think he'll be fine. He's fine. He's a godsend. Look at his shooting category. He is fine. Maybe a centerman for us next year. Why did I press back? Why did I do that, Owen? Why are you bad at this, huh? Punk? <laughs> okay, and then who else? Jankowski? Not bad. And then... Yeah, ooh, fourth... Okay, I think... I think we gotta change up our bottom six. I think I'm gonna throw Sam Bennett on our third line. I think Sam Bennett deserves that at least. I think even if they lose that plus one on the third line, I think that'll help things out. Defensively, how how's it going? Wow, we got a lot of minus players on this team. Oh my god, Colton Perenko, we pick you up and you're a minus ten? What the hell is this game on? That shouldn't be happening. That's not, no, no. He has two points. Two! What? No. That's not... No. How? He's got an... Thank you, Noah Hannafin, for being good, but a minus six. Valimaki, minus three, nine points. Not bad. Dion Phaneuf, plus 15. <laughs> He's honestly been our best defender, which is <laughs> scary to say, but... Yeah, our three guys right here, not bad, but our top guys are just not great defensively right now. Goaltending, Dave Riddich, 903, 279 goals against, 13 wins, 7 losses, 5, 3, and 1 for James Reimer. James Reimer has definitely been the better goaltender half the games, but I'm not too sure about that. Let's check the title or the award races as it currently stands. The best goaltender in the league is current, I would probably say... It's Marc-Andre Fleury. It is one point better than Corpus Allo with six more games played, most wins in the league. Best goals against amongst uh, amongst a lot, so good for him. Rookie skaters in year number three. It is. Alex Newhook, is, this is his first year that you're letting him play? Okay. Alexander Romanov, who also signed his NHL deal today with the Montreal Canadiens. Cole Caulfield, another phenomenal prospect. Tim Stutzel... Quentin Byfeld. A lot of rookies this year. I wish Tristan O'Reilly was in that running, but apparently not. Defenseman. Okay. Ooh. Tight race at the top. You got Heskinen. Or, yeah, Heskinen. Klingberg. Oh, Dallas is good. And Morgan Riley. I'd say, honestly, Morgan, uh, Morgan, Morgan Riley, not O'Reilly, is the best defenseman so far. One point back of first place and a much better plus minus. So yeah, I would say it's currently his Norris. And the Art Ross is currently going to Steven Stamkos. One point above Pierre-Luc Dubois, Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode legend. Tampa Bay is having a great year. That is very, very scary. Obviously, Nathan McKinnon. Who's surprised by that? Goals. Nikita Kucherov. 20 goals. Leading the pack right now. Where, where's your boy? Where's your boy Ovechkin? Only 14. What is happening, Ovi? You got you okay? You go, you okay, bud? Only 769 goals. Nice, huh? He's usually really good in simulation, but okay. Most assists currently. Pierre Luc Dubois, absolute beauty. No, no problem there for Columbus. But there are a lot of things to discuss. So, bottom six, what do you think we could get from around the league? What should we add? What should we change? I think all around we've been pretty good, but there's definitely some things we could change up. 
What do we change? How should we do it? Thank you guys so much for the support. I did say last, or last time I recorded, that I would be starting up a podcast. A hockey-related podcast. Sometime soon. I think I'll set the time for it to be when we hit 700 subscribers. I think when we hit 700 is the time that I will start the podcast up. So quicker we get to 700, the quicker I get to talk for over an hour about hockey. Because I love talking about hockey. So keep that in mind. Spread the word. If you've enjoyed this one, please leave a like, leave a comment, share with people who you think may enjoy this sort of thing. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.